Welcome everyone, my name's Steve Brooks and I've written the Construction Site Electrical Systems course. I've tried to write this course to make it suitable for all abilities, even for people without an electrical engineering background. In this first lecture, I'm just going to give a brief introduction to the subjects we're going to cover. We start by looking at the general requirements for the Construction Site Electrical System. This includes defining what a competent person is, and the design documentation required on site. We then go on to how we inspect electrical site equipment and we go through some examples of good and bad practice. We then look at how we install an electrical site system starting with a generator compound then going on to how we install the LV boards. In the next section we look at grounding we start by going back to first principles and looking at what happens when we have a fault in an ungrounded system. We then use this scenario to compare it to a grounded system and look at the differences between the two. We then go on to look at the different ways we install a ground system on site. In the first scenario we use the cabling system to connect the ground network. Finally we look at an alternative way to ground the network which is to ground each individual panel. In the next section we look at site electrical circuits. We start by describing a typical electrical system on site containing a generator, a laydown area and a distribution system. We then look at all the individual elements separately starting with how we connect a generator and finishing with a site distribution board. In the next section we look at residual current devices which are one of the key safety features of a site distribution system. We start by going back to first principles looking at how a residual current device or RCD operates. We then look at how an RCD is constructed and how it deals with a fault. Next we look at the key features of an RCD. And finally we look at the key things you need to consider when positioning an RCD in the distribution network. In the next section we look at electrical faults. We start by looking at a healthy three phase network and how the currents behave in a balanced and an unbalanced system. We then look at the different possible faults that can occur and see what happens to the currents under each scenario. We then look at the effects of an electrical fault on the human body, starting with the main hazards, before looking at how the effects on the body increase when the current increases. In the next section we look at how we size an electrical system, starting off with the circuit breakers. Next we provide a simple methodology for sizing the circuit breakers to feed a typical site office and also introduce the principle of electrical diversity. We then go on to size the circuit breakers in a main distribution system before finally looking at how we size a generator. In the next section we look at electrical cabling. We start by seeing how we size an electrical cable based on the coven that it carries and the volt drop. We then look at how we install cables safely on site and provide some examples of poor workmanship before finally looking at the different options of how we take a cable across a roadway. In the final section we look at lock and tag systems. These are critical to the safe operation of the electrical system on site. We start by looking at the lock and tag system itself including the tag and the padlock. We then go on to see how we use the lock and tag system to lock off enclosures. Next we look at isolation points and how we need them in the electrical distribution system to keep the system safe. And finally we see how we use lock and tag systems to energize a system for the first time. By the end of this course you will understand all of the basic systems that we use for the construction site electrical system. I hope you enjoy the course.